Hey guys, I just thought I'd come on here. Hopefully I'm gonna try to be quick. It's not about my hair today, as you can see. I just kind of threw it up. I was vacuuming on my unit. So, I have started a new job. And I just kind of wanted to throw some things, some questions out there and just see what you, what you guys think. I'm a nurse, so I would really love to hear back from some nurses who have started in a new build facility. Um, and this is a post-acute center, so it's not like, it's not a long-term facility. It's a post-acute rehab center um, that bridge between hospital and home. They're not quite needing the um, level of care in the hospital, but they're not quite ready to go home yet. So they, you know, hip replacements or knee replacements where you're gonna have to have like three days uh, physical therapy three days a week and if you live by yourself and you get discharged from the hospital and go home now you have to figure out how you're gonna get to physical therapy three times a week cook for yourself you know just all those things so we're kind of our center is kind of that bridge and the crux of it is is to decrease re admissions into the hospital um, so here they'll get their intense re rehab um, they'll get their diets the way that they're supposed to get it make sure that you know we're not and just to be observed just you know another three to 15 days just to make sure that they're healing okay that things are going well if they have any um, wounds that need to be tended to that we would do that um, so that's what we're offering here and it's a 70 bed post-acute center um, we also have on the second level an assistant living center with assistant living apartments up there but that I won't be um, if you know anything about assisted living, I won't be up there. That's a whole different entity. But um, my, I'm used to working. I'm used to coming into a job, getting my orientation, and, and hit the floor running. And I've been here for a little over a month now. We just kind of, there's a, a really small crew now, a nursing crew, because they, they have nurses, um, other health professionals, CNAs, ready to go once we start taking patients in. But right now it's myself, I'm an RN, um, an LPN, and an LPN is the admissions nurse. Um, I do believe that they have one other LPN that was orientating last week, or they hired last week. I'm not sure I was out of town, I'm just kind of hearing this. So what I do know is they do have, you know, like three for CNA so we just kind of come in and just do whatever needs to be done right now like stocking whenever um, deliveries come in stocking our storage room learning our med machine um, the CNAs have been um, kind of working with the lift systems which uh, we have a Hoyer lift and then a, a sit to stand lift and we're not thinking that we're really gonna need the Hoyer lift that is not where we're trying to go here in this facility where we would need the Hoyer lift um, there's certain criteria that patients do have to meet in order to come, but um, or be referred here, and we're hoping that we don't have to use a Hoyer lift. Um, but you know things like that. So the reason we don't have any, some of them have been here since August, just kind of finding things to do. So I do want to say this is that kudos to the company that it's not our fault that we haven't started accepting patients yet so they're allowing, allowing us to come in and get our hours and everybody's been very um, responsible with that there's a lot of downtime but yet we are all doing things that need to be done outside of our scope of practice and um, whether it is like I said I was vacuuming floors on my unit um, going in sweeping rooms um, flushing toilets because you know the water stands if this stuff isn't being used the water kind of turns I'm in my area the water kind of turns a yellowish so just doing things like that I'm a type of person that I like to learn so I've been kind of doing some continuing education on the computer there was a massive amount of mandatory modules that we had to do you know and I've been working my way through there so we've been responsible for that you know being here and it's not just a total um, stealing of hours not not on my part anyway I don't know what everybody else is doing but um but it's been a challenge for me you know like I said it's a new build we haven't gotten patients in and it's really at this point it's IT 
thing of making sure that our electronic systems, documentations, and all of that stuff are speaking to each other because it's it's touting to be everything is electronic here. There's no paper or anything. So even if the even if the nurses' documentation is up and running or physical therapies electronic charting is up and running, the CNAs is it? They're like no. You know, so we have to, CNAs will have tablets that they go, and we just need for all of those things to talk to each other. So that's what they're working on now. And um, so we're looking at sometime in November, for, uh, first couple of weeks of November, um, to start accepting patients. So the end of October, we're supposed to be going into our actual training of our electronic documentation. Um, but this is the thing, before I accept this position, as I'm staff nurse, um, getting back into hands-on bedside care, ugh, after 30 years of nursing, I'm coming out of education, like teaching at the baccalaureate level, and I'm coming back to hands-on. But it was just something that I wanted to do, um, to get back into hands-on nursing. I love teaching, and I know that I will go back there. But I think that getting this, I didn't really want to go back into the hospital, but getting this position, I think kind of still gives me the hands-on nursing that I want, that I desire, and that will make me a little bit more um, rounded. Because when I was teaching, I totally came away from the bedside. And prior to teaching, I was an endoscopy nurse, so I was kind of special procedures um, outside, ambulatory. So I haven't been in the hospital setting in probably almost nine years, Five. probably 10 years. So um, I needed to, for me, I wanted to get back into this hands-on. So once again, it's a post-acute, so it's not an acute care setting, um, which is fine with me. I know a lot of, it's fine with me. I don't know if I ever want to go back into acute care setting anyway, especially after coming out of education. I just kind of want to be where I still ha get some skills, have those nursing skills, but still be able to, um, if I want to pick up clinicals with um, a college or something, I could do that or, you know, do um, have more options. But I would apply for a couple of jobs before taking this, accepting this position. They were nurse managers positions, and, um, and I was advancing in the um, interview processes, however, um, it was just something I felt about this one, and you know I prayed about it, and I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to be here, um, but then I'm looking at these jobs that I had applied for. There's two specific jobs, and they were both in leadership positions. They're still available, and it's just like ugh, I could have been work. I could have gotten that, you know, they've been in a leadership position and blah, 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 making a little bit more money too. And it's just like, did I make the right decision? I, I question myself on that. But in my heart of hearts, I know that I did. Some advantages, I am 10 minutes away from home, so I could roll out of bed and be at work. These other positions, I would have been on the other side of town. Traffic, at least 45 minutes to get to work. Um, and probably longer to get home from work. So in that vein, when I look at that, you know, I wanted a work-life balance. Um, 12 hour shifts right now, three a week, which I probably will pick up some extra hours when we first start accepting patients just because I know I will. Um, but I think that there's so much room here for advancement, but there's a, a caveat to that. And that is that you know, people higher up, they tend to bring in people that they've worked with before, and there is um, rela relationship webs here. You know, a lot of friends and family. So, um, although I feel like there's potential for growth, I don't know if certain positions will come up if they'll have somebody in mind to fill that position. So I've been proactive. I've been talking to the CNO and just telling her what things that I would like to do. So let me back up. I have a master's in nursing. So um, there's things, there's positions that will come op available that I will be um, eligible for 
because of experience and knowledge and education. So I just kind of put that on the table with her and, um, and which is why I'm doing these um, continuing education, just to stay abreast on things, just so that even here, I'm making myself marketable within where I am with this new build. So, um, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to throw that out there. How do you deal, any nurses out there, with new builds starting from the ground up? Um, what are some things that I, you know, could be doing to um, further ready myself for other positions that become available? Um, actually, she brought to me about a case management being a case manager as we bring in more patients. And I would love to do that, I think. You know, so that's, those are things that I'm beginning to look at. Um, the Association for case, Nurse Case Managers, and just things that um, doing uh, continued education free, um, case management type, you know, um, things. So let me know if there's anything else I should be doing just to kind of ready myself in this downtime that we have. So, you know, that's another two weeks, just so that I can just be preparing myself, readying myself, positioning myself for, to be further, a further, um, more of an asset for them. So let me know. All right. Talk to you later. Thanks for listening. <laughs>